Uh, dear friends, hello. Today we have very exotic guest, uh, I think very powerful guest. And when I read about that guest, I have a feeling that this person is 100 years old because it's difficult to say what he is not doing. He is the owner of the multi-million company, which is called Maximilian London. He is running marathons. He is supporting animals. He is doing kendo. He is like in one person, a thousand other people. So we are very welcome, Maxim Artsanovich. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, Maxim. Thank you so much for your time. And we are very honored to see you today. Uh, Maxim, my first question to you. You built a very big company and known company, which is called Maximilian London. And mm -hmm. you are competing with huge monsters like Cartier, like other, you know, very, very big uh, companies, Tiffany. And you are, you know, great Russian person who, who managed to succeed. Some experts say that maybe your company even around $200 million. Uh, it mm -hmm. sounds like something impossible. Tell me, please, how did you do it? Well, the, the, first, uh, the first question, why are you calling them monsters? You know, they're not monsters. It's just, uh, you know, the large companies with the um, generations of you know, history. And, uh, yeah, they're not monsters. They're good competitors, you know, and... Um, um that when you're saying that somebody uh, uh somebody saying that some experts saying that we're a 200 million dollars company uh not somebody there's a british uh, there's a british uh, uh, agency um uh, marketing agency called the brand finance so the brand finance they taking care of um uh, amazon facebook you know airflot British Airways, you know, Tesla, and a lot, lot of uh, a huge uh, multi-billion dollar companies. And uh, uh, this is our, actually, the marketing advisors and auditors. So they made a brand valuation of the Maximilian London last year, 2019, for $250 million, which is uh, basically, it's a result of our work for the last 20 years. And um, yeah, so how do we uh, compete with the big uh, corporations? You know, um, our, our main difference that we are uh, a, a with small, the big uh, luxury uh, uh, tailor-made atelier. You know, I, I I will try to explain you. If if you look on the uh, Prêt-à-Porter. Uh, uh, close, you know. Let's say if you if you're a wealthy businessman, so then you buy a, a famous brands like uh, you know Armani, or you go to buy a Brioni, or you go to buy Keaton, you know this and that, and you pay for your for your suit like you know five, six, ten thousand dollars. So, but if you're a very special person and you're a wealthy person. So then you go to the to the street in London like a civil row, and then you made a, a tailor-made product made by measure. You choose uh, with the uh, with the artist with the ta with your tailor, who is actually the artist. You choosing your your fabrics, you know the buttons, you know all kind of things, you know, and then you create your own uh, a, a suit which is uh, made only special for you. And it's one of the kind in the world, a unique piece, you know, just made by measure only for, for you, you know, for, for, for your specific, uh, you know, requests and needs. So it's exactly about Maximilian. So we, we are the small tailor-made atelier and we're creating um, a special products for, for super rich, wealthy people, uh, which is, you know, the bankers call them ultra high net worth individuals. So we're creating a, a, a very unique products. Every single item is a unique piece, one of the kind in the world, okay? And uh, we're choosing a very, very special uh, investment quality uh, uh, gemstones, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, Color diamonds, blue diamonds, pink diamonds, 
you know, green diamonds, orange diamonds, and uh, red diamonds, and uh, emeralds. We are the product for people who don't want to have Cartier, who don't want to have uh, Van Cleef or Tiffany, you know, because uh, most of the people in the world trying to get the similar product, you know, with uh, many others. And, uh, uh, you know, I would say a, a, a lot of uh, wealthy people driving a Ferrari or, or Lamborghini or Bentley, but there's a very, very few people who uh, driving, uh, let's say Pagani car, you know, or some uh, very special sports luxury cars like a Spiker, you know. So we are for for unique, for special people who don't want to be, uh, you know, similar with with other peoples, and uh, for people who who get tired of uh, wearing the the Cartier uh, love bracelet or the Tiffany key chains, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, our motto is, uh, you know, be, be different. Absolutely. It's a different motto. If you say it's for somebody who is extremely rich, ultra rich, and he want to have something very special, which is not Cartier or Tiffany or something else. Uh, tell not, me ultra, not, ultra, not ultra rich, you know, you can get a, a Maximilian product for, five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars you know but it will be just a different from others you know it will uh, show that you are a unique person you know you're different from others and that's it i mean you don't have to be a super rich you know you can be a middle class you know you can be a, the top manager of the some uh, some bank or some company you know and if you can afford to spend five ten thousand dollars you are our client you know welcome Great. Tell me, please, Maxim, I know that uh, a lot of royal families and sheikhs and sheikhs, they like your brand very much and you are quite famous in the East. How it's happened? Is It was your plan to become uh, famous in the uh, Arabic countries or it's, it was not planned, it's just by accident? How it's happened that you are very famous in that region? Well, look, uh, nothing in business is uh, coming by by accident. Uh, I think that um, you know, but uh, it, it, the twenty years back, if I look at the twenty years back, we we established a brand Maximilian London in uh, nineteen ninety nine, at the end of the twentieth century and the beginning of twenty first century, and it was exactly the time, you know, in the middle between. Uh, it was like a millennium time, you know, between. Uh, 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 centuries, yes. So um, uh, w when I just uh, started my company and, uh, um, you know, I, I started my jewelry business actually from uh, from UAE, from uh, uh, from Dubai. When I came to Dubai in 1995, 1996, 97, we started our distribution of the watches and jewelry of the famous brands from uh, our first partner was uh, Mohammed Siddiqui. Yeah, and and son the company you know and alfred dan and still we're good friends thanks god how people say in in uh, in uh, in middle east inshallah you know thanks god we're still a good friends and good partners and you know uh my first um, uh, uh, uh luck and my first wealth came from the distribution of the famous jewelry and watch brands from the uh dubai you know to russia and uh um, so, uh, when I started my own brand, uh, it was not actually planned uh, to, to acquire, you know, and to, uh, um, to become a number one, uh, um, the most, uh, famous brand, uh, in the Middle East, but, uh, the, the plan was fallen. We just, uh, we just opened the company in Dubai, just started promotions. We started to participate in uh, in um, different uh, jewelry exhibitions, uh, such as uh, exhibition in Dubai, in in Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. You know, step by step, step by step. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, we 
with the uh, uh, participations in these jewelry shows because you know uh, the the first day is all this for the royal family. You know when you open the 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 show in Qatar or Bahrain. You know the first day, the uh, emir or, or king. You know and his wives and uh, the childrens and the, the ministers, all the the top elite of the ruling family coming to to you know to the opening, and then uh, they start to know you and. Uh, you know, you exchange some, you know, conversations, some gifts, et cetera, et cetera. You know, step by step, you become a well-known plus advertisement, plus uh, participation in different events. I remember for the last, you know, 10 years in Middle East, we used to be uh, the general sponsor of uh, event like Arabian Woman Award. It's like an Oscar for, for the famous women you know, when they get uh, the, the prize. Oh, it's, it's a very famous award and yeah. all Arabic yeah, ladies, yeah. when they get it, it's big honor. Yeah, it's like events, you know, for the best housewife or the best designer, the best banker, the best, 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 you know, and then it's, it's, it's done special for women. And uh, yeah, we used to be the sponsor a few times in Abu Dhabi and the Qatar, Kuwait, Oman, you know, I remember it. And uh, uh, we are quite uh, regularly participating in, in Qatar Jewelry Show, which is for me number one in the whole Middle East. And the Bahrain Jewelry Show, which is uh, also my favorite one. And so um, step by step, we got in touch with all the palaces, with all the special protocol uh, services in the palaces. And that's how we became well known in Middle East in Middle East. So um, it's just uh, historically, you know, it was not really planned, you know, but uh, because, uh, you know, I, I live between uh, uh, Moscow, London and Dubai. And, uh, you know, this area is covered by by by, by us. But uh, we also participate in, in exhibitions in uh, Hong Kong three times a year. We participate in Las Vegas show in America and uh, many other jewelry shows. But uh, let's say uh, our center, center of our uh, financial interest, it's Middle East. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you're doing operations in Middle East, you stay in Dubai, you know, obviously Dubai is number one city in, in Middle East today. It goes without saying, Maxim, but your company is called Maximilian London. Yeah. Uh, London, yeah, London, because, you know, it was established in London. And uh, the Maximilian is because, uh, well, there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting stories. You know, the, 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 when I created the company, the company was created uh, in the, uh, let's say, uh, in the memory of uh, the emperor of the great Roman Empire, Maximilian the, the, the first, you know, and then... Uh, also, my name in uh, in French is Maximilian, so it's kind of uh, you know, it's not really that, that I created the company in in the in the favor of of me, you know. Uh, it's not like Maxim Arsinovich or, or something, you know. It's just uh, Maximilian. So then, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the 20th century, I I I, I was uh, uh, discussing. Uh, discussing this matter with uh, my mentor, you know, the, 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 the big famous American billionaire from New York. And uh, he was quite, you know, uh, adult person and a very experienced one. He was one of the shareholders of the Sony Corporation. So the Michael really gave me a lot of good advisors, you know, and then uh, when he said, uh, look, you need to choose the, the, the port uh, for your boat. You know, you need to choose the city you know, where you established. And then, uh, you know, in jewelry business, we're talking about fine jewelry, you know, from the step one, uh, you know, I was only dreaming to to do business with the fine jewelry because I was distributing uh, Chopin and Chomet and, uh, and Cartier and Van Cleef and Graf and everything, you know, from Middle East to Russia. So it was a, it was a top 10 jewelry brands. And then I said, okay, Look, if, if I if I will do business, you know, in jewelry, 
I will not go to the mass market. I will do uh, the fine jewelry, the, 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 like French saying creme de la creme, the, the top of the top. And then uh, uh, in the fine jewelry business, there's only four or five cities in the world, you know, let's say New York. So New York, you think immediately about Harry Winston and Tiffany, you know, you say Geneva. So Geneva, you think immediately about the Chopard and uh, Chopard and uh, um, um, Piaget, you know. So uh, when you say in uh, 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 Paris, you know, Paris is a plus one dome and in Paris, you immediately think about Cartier and Van Cleef and uh, Boucheron and Chomet. You know, this is a top four uh, 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 fine jewelry brands, the creme de la creme. So you say uh, a Bulgari and it's a Rome, you know. And uh, if, if you say about London, so London, number one is a, is a, a spray because uh, this brand existing from... Uh, 1735 you know asprey and still it's a supply of the royal family of the uh, windsor palace uh, uh, uh so um uh, asprey and the graf and uh, musayev and the uh, david morris so uh, you know at the end of the uh, 20th century beginning of 21st century a lot of uh, super rich uh, russians they uh, they moved to London. We're not talking about Abramovich and Chelsea, you know. We're talking much earlier time, and uh, you know, I was always uh, you know being in love with London. You know, to me, it's my second home. You know, and this beautiful uh, European capital, financial center, and it's very close to 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 to, to Russia and very close to other destinations. I never dream about live in, in new york or manhattan you know los angeles so um i chose in london and uh um you know today we live in the uh in the uh global world the globalization it's a, it's a it's a real thing you know it's that's what's surrounding us every day and uh you know you can be uh you can be armenian and own a, a big american company you know you can be a russian you know, you can be a Russian and own a Google. Come on, you know. You can be a Chinese, like a Jimmy Choo, you know, and own a, a beautiful shoe company from London. You know, so it's all international. You know, uh, you drive in Range Rover, but Range Rover belongs to Indians, you know. So uh, I don't see any big problem if uh, if the Russian-born uh, 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 guy owns a, a British-born uh, uh, uh a jewelry jewelry house that's that's my case and uh, you know in 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 fact uh, i hold a caribbean passport you know so i when the people asking my nationality i'm i'm not saying russian you know i'm saying kitishan because you know i'm <laughs> yeah kitishan yeah because i'm 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 a citizen of saint saint christopher and navies uh that's my yeah, that's my passport, actually, you know, here. You see, oh my beautiful, God. Maxim, beautiful, looks like beautiful, American, you know. Beautiful passport. I would say if you want to surprise somebody, you surprised many times uh, by what you're doing and what you're thinking. You mentioned that you have a mentor. Do you think uh, for businessmen it's good to have a mentor? Very important. Very important. You know, at the very beginning, it's the first stage of your career. You know, it's very important that you have uh, some experienced uh, adult man or woman you know, who can give you a good advisors, you know, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you never, uh, you never follow these advisors, you know, because every, everyone have his own way. But, uh, for example, you know, the, I just, I just remember when the Michael, you know, we were, we were sitting, you know, next to the swimming pool in the Four Seasons Hotel, on Maldives, you know, and it was a, a, a beginning of, uh, of the 21st century. It was, uh, you know, 20 years back. And then he told me, you know, Max, uh, I give you some of uh, my life experience about real estate. You know, he said, if you want to, if you want to, to buy or to build a real estate, you know, just uh, uh, buy um, um, uh, only uh, in the country where you live, you know, your apartment and your house, 
you know, so the rest, you just rent, you know, travel all around the world. The, 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 uh, our planet is huge, you know, there's many, uh, you know, continents and many countries to travel, you know, and then life is short, you know, so don't make mistakes, you know, don't buy any property, you know, outside of, of the country where you live. You know, and don't try to build, you know, anything, you know, in the country where you don't live. And I made a huge mistakes. You know, I invested a millions and millions and millions of dollars in, in Dubai, you know, and it was uh, 2005 and six and seven and eight. So finally, in 2008, we lost all money in Dubai. All, all, you know, you know, with the with the real estate crisis. Then I built a, a, a huge house and a lot of, uh, you know, I bought a lot of land in, in, in Italy, in Sardinia Islands. You know, it's, it was also my mistake, you know. So I invested 15 years back, bought like 10 hectares of land. Now we have uh, two, two big homes and I never slept even one single night, you know, in these homes. Spent the millions of euros, you know. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I always remember his, his advice, but... I chose in my own way to me, you know, in, 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 in that time, it, you know, it looks like a, like a really good investment. You know, it was a, you know, a few people around me who were trying to, to sell me, you know, these Italians and these and that, and that. So finally we all making our mistakes, but it's very important to have a mentor who can tell you about the marketing and sales and uh, investments and this and that, you know, just, you know, it's very important. I'm, 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 uh, uh, I'm doing a lot of advices for the young uh, uh, business people. And uh, quite often uh, 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 universities inviting me like a speaker, you know, or, as a speaker no, Maxim, to... definitely it's more interesting than to read a book because you are you know like legend and especially the thing that you made mistakes it's even more interesting because you can share about that but what do you think to people who are just starting their career they just asking now it's a terrible time turbulent time and they say they're afraid to start any business because when we switch on the news it looks like the end of the world but crisis think... a crisis is a time of opportunities come on it's a time of opportunities, you know, uh, it's always like this. So they do afraid. And then what, what is the question? The question is when a person has a good idea and he wants to start a business, do you think it's possible to start a business right now or it's not a good time to do it? You know, it's uh, exactly the, any, 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 any turbulence, any financial crisis is exactly the right time to start the new business because, uh, you know, a, a lot of opportunities just to give you a good example you know it was a pandemic time you know um, most of the countries that they were uh, locked down you know and i remember we were sitting here in moscow in the center of moscow and the uh, streets uh, was empty no people on the streets so and it was a, a big potential time for for the zoom because the capitalization of the zoom just uh, you know, fly like a rocket, you know, and then the guy who created Zoom, he was a, a, a small, poor Chinese, uh, you know, IT guy, and now he became a, a, a billionaire, okay? So then uh, uh, using the Zoom conference, except the Zoom, there's many, many other uh, uh, um, messengers, uh, you know, for communication, etc., etc. So then, uh, look, uh, the companies uh, for the food delivery, just booming, you know, in Russia, in Dubai, in America, everywhere, you know. And um, well, the, 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 there's a lot of lot of opportunities, you know, for uh, uh, people created so many businesses. You know, I saw even uh, the part-time business. Like, look at the very beginning of uh, at the very beginning of uh, the pandemic, the Moscow was out of the mask. And the, uh, the Glass. these uh, globes, okay. So then, I I know some people who uh, were very active, very active, and they they were buying. Uh, okay, they had the capital. They had the capital, so they went to, to China at the very very you know uh, uh, top time of the pandemic in China. They went to China. They bought a few a few airplanes. 
a huge cargo airplanes of the Musk. And then uh, people invest a few million dollars, you know, so they each mask cost them four cents, you know, so when uh, on the delivery to, to Moscow, they were selling it for 30 rubles, 30 rubles, uh, which is, uh, which was uh, 50 cents. Okay. And it was a wholesale price. And then uh, in that particular time, March, April, May, you know, these Chinese masks was selling in a, in a uh, in Moscow pharmacies for about uh, 50, 60 rubles, you know, double price. So the people made the millions of dollars just uh, in a short period, um, you know, March, April, May. So now the, it's all overloaded. You know, you go to any, any pharmacy and uh, you'll see that, you know, there's a lot of gloves and masks and it's not a big deal. And you can buy them for, for 10 rubles or 12 rubles, you know. But um, yeah, the business fail. The most important to understand that not everyone can be entrepreneur, you know. So there's a statistics made by, I don't know which, I don't remember which university in America, but there's a statistics a saying that in the big cities like New York, Moscow, London, Tokyo, in the big cities, you know, we're not talking about villages, you know, countryside. In the big cities, only 3% of the population can be entrepreneurs. The 97% are employees. Come on, you know. So uh, even if you open a small kiosk selling, uh, I don't know, shaverma, or, you know, or you want to open a shisha bar, you know, you want to be entrepreneur. You, you want to open a small corner in the golden souk in Dubai and sell, uh, sell uh, the cheap cheap gold or silver items, you know, for the tourists, you have to be an entrepreneur, you know, and it means already that you are different from others, you know, the 97% of people, they can't do this job, you know, they will go, they will, they will be working like, you know, managers, drivers, you know, cleaners, waiters, you know, if you work in waiter in the restaurant, not necessarily you become the owner of your own restaurant, you know, unfortunately, you know, but if you, if you work a waiter in you in the restaurant and then same time you study, I don't know, in the Stanford university. So, uh, and you're working just because you need the uh, 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 money for living and you want to be independent from your parents. So then uh, after, uh, after the waiter's uh, experience and the Stanford university degree, you can make a, a multi-billion dollar company you know uh well, maxim these are very useful advices and i also agree that sometimes you should be risky and not sit and complain because if you complain nothing will come out of that and uh, i read that your business even grew in the time of the pandemic uh, uh, tell me please how is it possible because it looks like people now don't buy gems diamonds right not that much. right Right, because you know, I took my risk. I took my risk. You know, we had our cost price, the production cost so of the jewelry, and we had our retail price. Okay, and obviously that uh, the production uh, the cost and the retail price is two different things. Okay, so um, at the beginning of March, when the stock market crashed down, like in nine of March, you know, um, it was a panic for me. You know, I, I didn't know what to do because uh, I understood that. I understood that uh, we are in luxury business. We have a tons of, of money invested in the gemstones and jewelry. But when you need to eat, you can't eat your jewelry, you know. So you need to be liquid. You need cash. Immediately, the next day after, after the crash of the stock market, we announced globally, you know, uh, worldwide in all our offices and point of sales in the different continents. We announced uh, using the, our Instagram and Facebook that we from from now on we're doing cash sales, not li not liquidation of the company, but liquidation of the stock. You know, the cash sales seventy off minus seventy percent. You know, there are a lot of people, wealthy people, they, they, have, uh, they have a lot of cash, you know, and then they were sitting 
home, boring, you know, watching the movies and, uh, you know, talking with, with their, uh, <clears throat> you know, families, etc., etc. You know, and they just need a, a, a good, uh, let's say, uh, um, emotions, you know, and uh, they just need this serotonin, the hormone of the happiness. And then, um, look, I'm a, I'm a shopaholic too, you know, when, 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 when Hermes or, you know, some other companies like Laura Piana inviting me for like a VIP customer, you know, they inviting me for the sales of 75, 70, 75%, a special closed sale, not for everybody, you know. You just go and you buy some uh, super luxury, top quality items for peanuts. You know, you buy for the 20% from 100, you know. And uh, you spend, sometimes you buy things which you don't even need, you know. So it's a, you know, well, it's a psychological thing. You know, we announced the, the sales 70, 75%, you know, like 25% uh, from 100. And immediately uh, in the first two weeks of the pandemic in March, we made a huge sales, huge sales, you know, and we sold some items which we had uh, for, for years in our stock, you know, and then we got some, uh, a lot of calls from, uh, from palaces, from private homes, from, you know, from the top, top uh, richest people uh, you know, uh, from Forbes, Russians, Ukrainians, Kazakhstan, you know, uh, from Arabic countries. And if we were able to deliver, we use our chance, uh, you know, uh, took the cab or uh, drive by ourselves, you know, and we were delivering to people our jewelry straight to the palaces, straight to their homes. And uh, we were selling, selling, selling. Same time, I understood that the stock market is uh, dramatically down. And then I reinvest my money, my capital into famous um, uh, blue chips, you know, like a Boeing, like, you know, Coca-Cola, Alphabet, which is Google, you know, and uh, Facebook and uh, Tesla. Nestle, you know, the, 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 the top 100 uh, most important uh, uh, Maxim, food, but you, uh, food, uh, food production, IT, IT yeah. companies, you know. So uh, then uh, in a two months for some of this investment, we double our capital, you know. So that, that's fantastic. opportunity. That's opportunity. But same time. It was a very conservative, a big monsters, like you call them, like a Cartier and Van Cleef. And it's a huge corporations with the board of directors, with, uh, uh, you know, where um, employees, the, the top managers, but they are still employees. They're not shareholders. They're making decisions for their shareholder, which is, you know, the family of the uh, um, uh, 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 a billionaire father and son from South Africa, you know, they were not flexible. Cartier and Van Cleef did not announce a sales of 70%. But with their huge markup, you know, even if they sell minus 70%, they make a profit, believe me, you know. So they were not so uh, flexible and they were sitting and, and they had the losses because you pay salary to your employees, nobody helping you, you know. You probably pay a half of your rent for the all, all shops globally, worldwide. Imagine how many retail point of sales they, they have. And uh, for them, it was a not time of opportunity. For them, it was a, it was a hard time of, of, of big financial losses. You know, but we're Maxim, small. But who helped yeah. you to make this decision? Did you come to that decision yourself no, no, no. that you, yeah, that you will sell it? It's, it's immediately, I'm the owner. I don't, need, uh, I don't need to, you know, I don't have any partners in my business. So I don't need to, to, to get any advice or to get any consultancy, you know, from, from somebody else. You know, I, all decisions made by me. You know, I, I immediately, you know, when the, when the financial crisis came of this 2020, 
I knew exactly what I have to do. And we keep doing this, you know. Uh, the, uh, it's very strange that a lot of people thinking that the pandemic is over, crisis is over, you know, the, the shops opened, uh, the resorts, hotels, restaurants, everything opened. No, we will feel, we will see the results of the, you know, pandemic much, much later. You know, I think that uh, a lot of troubles, they will start from the September, October, November, you know, end of the year. The second part of the year will be very, 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 very tough, you know, and uh, I'm expecting the, the huge crash of the stock market again, and I'm liquid now. I'm sitting in cash because, you know, the old stocks we bought, we sold them out. We fixed the profit. We were liquid. We're sitting in cash and uh, we're watching what the, uh, Mr. Warren Buffett doing. You know, sometimes he's making mistakes. I'm not following his strategy, you know, because look, he's an 80 years old guy. We have a different life experience, but um, but uh, it's not over. And of course, we changed our production strategy because uh, a lot of factories uh, who making our production already opened. And uh, if we if we were let's say ordering collections with the average uh, average retail price of a hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars. And it was just the beginning of 2020. So today I'm communicating with my production facilities and we ordering a new collections. You know, we didn't lose our time for nothing. You know, I, it was a great family time and it was a great time uh, for communication with my designers. We created a lot, a lot of collections during the March, April and May, you know, the time of, of sitting home. And uh, now we're making collections with the average retail price of the twenty twenty five thousand dollars. Let's say five times cheaper than it was before. We're creating. So more... you mean you going little bit to mass production? No, it's not mass production at all. No, it's a, it's a it's still it's a luxury product. Come on, you know you you're talking about twenty twenty five thousand dollars. Who can afford it today? You know it's not mass production. Mass production, it's a mass production, the jewelry McDonald's, it's, a, uh, it's Pandora. Pandora, Pandora yeah. is a great business. You know, I wish I can be a, I can be a shareholder of Pandora, you know, because in Pandora, the markup they, they use in it's 1000%. They produce in a cheap silver, make it fashionable. And uh, they sell in uh, worldwide $2 billion a year. Pandora is a huge multi-billion dollar company, you know, and uh, uh, no, it's not mass production. We just, uh, we just uh, change, uh, you know, the people, well, wealthy people, uh, they want to, to wear luxury for every day. If uh, let's say 10 years back, we were producing a, a giant rocks, you know, or the huge, diamonds and rubies and sapphires 25 30 50 carats and every item worth millions and millions of dollars you know so our production in 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 uh, uh in the quantity was small it was just a few hundred pieces but uh, in volume uh, you know in money it was huge so today we go on, we're following the trend the rich and famous, they want to wear luxury for every day. You know, they want still to wear rubies and sapphires and emeralds and diamonds, but something more affordable, you know, not just the evening dress, not for the gala dinners, you know, the balls or something, you know, but they want to wear it every day, you know, uh, like a casual. And uh, the good example for you, it's... Um, well, the good example of this, uh, the casual uh, luxury items, the Messica. You know, the Valerie Messica, she did a great job. You know, her company is only 11 years old, 11 years old, you know, and uh, she's just a beginner compared to, to the big monsters like uh, Cartier, Van Cleef, and the Graf, and uh, so on and so forth. But in 11 years, she succeeded, you know, she using a fashionable diamonds, you know, uh, this, she using a small, small diamonds, 
not expensive, creating the French design, good product made in Asia, the production costs not expensive, and she have more than 400 point of sales worldwide. It's a big business today, you know. So uh, I'm not saying I want to be a second Mexica, no. But uh, we make in our collection now uh, with a retail price between the 5,000 US dollars to 25,000 dollars. And uh, Maxime, uh, Maxim, I can see that you are very adaptive and you can till the market very well. And of course, this is one of your talents. Maybe that's why you are the owner of Maximilian London, the one who created this brand. And um, as my last question to you, if your company will be sold tomorrow for $250 million and you can rest, uh, what you will do? I know that you support arts, you protect animals and you are... Uh, defending human rights of, for animals as well. What, what you will do if you will sell your company tomorrow for two hundred fifty million? Yeah, we're talking. Uh, we're talking to investors, to some strategic investors, to institutional investors, to big foundations from Middle East and uh, you know from um, other countries. Uh, the two hundred fifty million dollars is a brand valuation. It's a valuation of the brand. You know, the company can be sold much cheaper can be company can be sold much higher you know so uh, we need investors now uh, for 100 150 million dollars cash in just to, you know for for the growth of the company because we need to open another point of sales in Paris in London in New York in Hong Kong and uh, actually we're dreaming to uh, make IPO of the company and uh, in the next five years to become a, a minimum capitalization of the company uh, should be a uh, 500 million dollars capitalization you know but if uh, i'm just uh, 50 years old and uh, i think you know the the good plan for me is to be retired at, at, at 55 you know to 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 realize some dreams and to cash out uh, from the company at the age of 55 so if I get any any capital and it will be payment for my success for the 30 years of my my career and uh, my hard work. So there's a plenty of things to do. You know, um, I'm a big art collector. We have a foundation, the Maximilian Art Foundation, which is supporting the young artists and uh, we're supporting a lot of exhibitions with the museums, a big global international uh, you know museums like uh, uh, Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg in MoMA and uh, uh, Louvre we do a lot of uh, projects with international museums and uh, supporting the young talents uh, printing the books uh, yes I'm a very very uh, let's say a radical and aggressive uh, protector saver of the animals and what the human beings doing today with uh, with the nature is just disaster. Imagine that in the last 40 years, from uh, from the 1980, in the last 40 years, a human beings uh, killed more than 60 percent of the whole birds, animals, and uh, fish you know, and destroy uh, more than 60% of the uh, wild nature. So uh, I'm really uh, worried about uh, the plastic islands in the ocean because uh, some of the, uh, the five biggest plastic islands have uh, uh, dimensions bigger than the, the continent of America. I'm not saying United States, I'm saying about continent of America, the five big plastic islands, you know, and then this plastic, that's what we eat in every day with the wild fish, which uh, uh, fishermen's catching in, in the ocean. You know, uh, what's happening with the nature is just disaster. Every single day, every single day, 365, 24 seven, me and my wife, we taking care of the, uh, homeless animals, dogs and cats. And when I finish uh, this interview, I'm going to my office, which is uh, just uh, 200 meters away. And we uh, yesterday we received the new cat. We saved the cat from the street three weeks ago. And I put him in the hospital, you know, cost me a lot of money. 
and for in a, in a free in a free month free month you know he became a healthy and big you know and fat and now he's, he's a young cat you know he's only one year old and today he's going to be adopted by very rich people my friends from moscow and the, 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 the you know the cat the cat the cat he got uh, he got uh, 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 he he won the lottery you know and he just he just came to me in the in the beginning of pandemic the first the first uh, week of march and start to cry and hold my my leg like this a cat on the street you know he chosen me from many other people on the street and uh, he started to cry and asked me about the help you know and took him to my office he was dirty and sick and this and that and that we sent him to the hospital same thing i did exactly one year ago in dubai in dubai i was going to the to to make a deal 10 million dollar deal to buy pink diamonds you know in the in the day era. you know i was going with my with my director ivan and we parked our car and then i saw this small cat small kitty like a two month old with the two broken legs you know because somebody uh, hit him you know and then he was sitting on the heat of the 50 degrees you know lay down on the street and 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 thousands of people they were passing by nobody even helped him so i canceled the meeting i canceled the meeting i took the the carton box from the supermarket put the guy in and it was a ramadan time and we we drive like crazy you know he was dying i saw in his eyes that you know he he, he must die within a few minutes and his legs was broken you know we came to the clinic and it was a british clinic i don't remember which one but very very close to the jumeira beach hotel you know and it's a road with the all these uh, clinics so uh, the guy cost me twenty thousand dirhams in a two month you know where they made him a few operations they put him a titanium uh you know some uh, some titanium things in, in into his legs and now he's a beautiful cat living with ivan and he's in his home and uh his name is max and he's a beautiful <laughs> his name his name yeah and uh, he's a beautiful cat and you know uh we, we give him chance you know we we taking care of the homeless uh dogs and cats uh and foxes and uh, and uh, other animals we support him financially you know uh volunteers and uh, the, the the there's a special places uh so some of them they they keep in 2000 animals and it's a huge work you know people taking care of them every day giving them food cleaning the cages etc cetera, etc cetera, walking with them taking care of the medicine look uh, a lot of things to do you know when 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 you're wealthy and you have a lot of time there's a lot of things to do traveling playing golf well and uh, taking care of children i don't have my children yet but i hope i i, I will get soon and, inshallah uh, as, as, a, as yeah. arabic people say inshallah and maxim yeah. i think i know the secret of success of maximilian london uh, maybe you know because you are very human and you stay human and even though you are a tough businessman but you are a very beautiful person with big soul and uh, you know it says a lot about you the secret of success that you need to share your success you know not only talking blah 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 you know but you need to share your success if you're making money if you're successful even you know i was uh, taking care of the homeless and poor when i was uh, a beginner you know at the very beginning you know uh, so if you if you open the quran or you open the bible or you open any saint book you know it's in a, in every religion it's written that you know so, sometimes it's written that 10 percent of your wealth of your income you have you have to to share with uh with, with a weak, weak weak people or or you know animals or something you know it doesn't really matter how much percent you know one percent or five percent or whatever but if you're successful if you if you're a businessman you're making money uh uh you will you will keep going you will keep be successful only if you share part of your success with somebody who are not able today you know to to buy food to you know to buy clothes you know to to have a to have a roof above his head you know something and look at the animals the most um, uh weak 
uh, most uh, weak uh, uh, alive uh, uh, creatures um, in the world. Yes, yeah. in the world because uh, they can't speak. You know, uh, they, they can't speak, and uh, uh, you know. Um, uh, they trust to to humans, and unfortunately, humans using this trust against them. You know, and uh, I, I, I see a lot of horrible things when people killing animals. I'm fighting against the against the uh, hunters. To me, you know, hunting is something when you need uh, um, a meat for food. You know, to eat. But it's not the situation of the 21st century when people do hunting for pleasure and then they kill in uh, bears and uh, and deers and many other animals uh, with the sniper rifles. Look, what is a what is a choice of the big bear who, you know, sitting in the river eating the salmon and then uh, somebody shooting him with the sniper rifle? From the distance of 500 meters or one kilometer, what is the choice of uh, of the bear to survive? You know, and what is the reason? You know, to to for people to 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 kill these animals. And uh, if you if you are a strong man, and you want to to show that uh, you know you are a real hunter, take a knife, go to go to this river and try to find to fight with the bear. With just with the one knife so then you will see the big difference so um hunters it's not my kind of people you know and um yeah I, i'm fighting against the hunters and uh, anyway maxim i will say that um i'm very much impressed by what you do and i think all of us we should do and i believe that why this crisis happened to the world to show us that we are guests at this planet and this planet belongs not only to people, it belongs to animals, it belongs to uh, plants, it's, not only to the, us, we are not the, the only one. We are guests, you know, uh, you're right. I mean, uh, uh, it's a mother nature who running our planet, you know, and all these uh, catastrophes like uh, tsunamis in, you know, in Japan, uh, killing uh, hundreds of thousands of people. It's a result of our activity today, you know, of human beings' activity on the planet. And uh, uh, just imagine one case. The last year, 2019, uh, almost 20 million hectares. 20 million hectares, it's a it's, um, size of... Uh, size of the Belgium plus some other small uh, European country. 20 million hectares of the wild forest were uh, burned in the far east of Russia. And uh, um, and millions and millions animals were killed. And uh, to recover, Mother Nature will need uh, a minimum 100 to 150 years to recover, you know, and uh, it's just a empty space. You can fly with the, you can fly with the airplanes and it will take you a couple hours, a couple hours with the airplanes to, to fly over this place and it's all dead, dead land, you know, and, uh, that's what I'm taking care of today. And I can't just, I can't sleep, you know, I can't uh, 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 leave my life making business, making the luxury jewelry for rich and famous and not thinking about, about animals or uh, wild nature or the, 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 the problem of the plastic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to, if you want to uh, uh, to get any r result of our conversation today, of our interview, so you sit in Dubai, make a, a little research of the uh, of the situation with the with the animals in UAE, and uh, so probably something click into your mind, uh, into your soul, you know, and then you if if you if you save one single animal per year. 
just one single animal, you will see uh, how you will change by, by, by yourself. You know, you will see some changes in your soul. You know, just to save one dog or cat per year, it's already a big thing, you know. And, uh, um, okay, anyway. Maxim, it's a long time uh, uh, I, I will tell you, since I'm a, a big fan uh, of dogs, and I always have dogs in my family and was raised uh, with the dogs, I understand what you're saying, and I will say that this crisis will never and unless we will change ourselves, we cannot burn forests, kill animals, make planets of plastics and live life as if nothing happened. Unfortunately, all that finished and we are already at the Rubicon, at the Rubicon. And if we pass, there will be never way back. And I'm happy that you're paying attention to that. I will be very happy to support you in that movement to protect animals, to protect nature, to protect forests, to talk about that. And at the end of the days, as you say, if we even save one soul, um, we are saving ourselves, not somebody else. Because we cannot raise kids and we cannot be human if we are not human ourselves. We cannot, it doesn't matter how many diamonds we will put and whatever dresses we are, we are you know why the, uh, the hidden, why it's called the block where you're talking is called hidden hero. Because I believe that we should take this hero out. And why the other block for women is called hidden beauty. The beauty is in everybody, but it is hidden. It's not about how many diamonds or how many plastic surgeries you will do. And I think the humanity is on the Rubicon. We spoiled that much. And now it's, I'm very grateful to you that you touch that topic, that it's not only about diamonds. It's not only about sales. It's not only about business. It's also important because you give job to many people. It's not only that you sell and buy, but... I, I give you a good example. I give you a good example. Because you're sitting now in Middle East, in Dubai. What's happening in Middle East, you know? And uh, the uh, um, the relationship between animals and, uh, and Middle Eastern uh, people, uh, even if they, uh, if they all got education from, uh, from London and, and, and America, you know, but uh, the Arabs what they do to animals for me it's like out of this world you know they taking care of the of the camels they taking care of the horses you know for them for them it's like a saint animals but at same time in dubai in abu dhabi there's a lot of uh, competition you know when the the there's a a desert dog called the saluka you know very skinny with the long legs a beautiful dog with the sandy color skin you know and um, these salukas uh, very very speedy uh, uh, dogs you know running uh, over 60 kilometers per hour one of the fastest uh, dogs in the world so um, when they uh, break their legs you know or, you know some uh, muscles or whatever they have any injuries um, instead of instead of uh, taking care of them and pe people play play you know these games for money for sure you know same like a horse racing you know yeah. so but Maxim, uh, you know i'm 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 very sorry to interrupt yeah. you because our yeah. time of the interview is finished what i want to say i'm very really very sorry yeah. for interrupting you no problem. Uh, i think also as an answer for your question i think we should influence whatever we can influence you know sometimes uh, as we say that uh, you are the guest on this planet, sometimes when you, you are the guest in that country, you can do yeah. to the limit that you can do. So for me, I think as we are citizenship of Russia, we, should, we yeah. are responsible what's happening uh, with our people, with our animals and me and you as a citizen, we should take responsibility for that. And you as a business owner, if you pay that much time and you even talk about that, I think that you are a very brave person with a very big heart. I will be happy to support you in that. I will be happy Good. to talk about that because I think by that we are influencing m more people even than by wearing diamonds. But it doesn't mean, as Dostoevsky said, that beauty will save the world. So today, mm -hmm. the one who saved the world was Maxim, who is the owner of Maximilian London. Maxim, thank you so much for being with us. You are a very brave and very beautiful thank person. I wish you. you all the best. 
to you, to your family, to Maximilian London, and uh, Hidden Hero will be happy to support you always. Thank you Thank so you. much. It was a pleasure to see you and to meet you.